One of the great feelings in life is being vindicated. You've been saying over and over again, this is going to happen, or I believe this to be true, or mark my words, this is going to happen. And very rarely do we ever get the acknowledgement or even the credit that we were right. So when it happens, especially like with siblings or spouses or something like that, sometimes we want to go, I told you. It doesn't happen for me very often. Um, so when it does happen, I, I well up inside and I want to just be like, yeah, see? And, you know, usually it turns out to be a very in poor taste and terrible timing to, to gloat and to brag that I was right about something. But there is going to be an opportunity for us to have that feeling of welling up inside and it will be uncontainable that we were proven right through all of our times of, of belief in a God who was distant, who seemed invisible to others, who um, didn't lay out all of the facts so that it was uh, indisputable that he was in fact real, instead left so much of it up to faith, um, that there will be a time where we are acknowledged to be right. And ultimately that's going to be because he's going to be acknowledged to be God. So Paul says it this way in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9. He says, Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. That is a moment that we anticipate greatly. Not just so that we could say, see, I told you so, but so that the very Lord that we've pledged our lives to, the very Lord that has condescended to us to save us. Remember, the whole thrust of Philippians 2 was that he humbled himself in order to accomplish the mission of laying his life down so that you and I could have salvation. That when he is revealed to be true, when he is revealed to be right, we are going to watch many others acknowledge that. And prayerfully, uh, they'll be acknowledging it in concert with us as worship, not as a dread or as a, uh, he was right and I've been wrong this whole time. Paul continues in verse 12, because of that revelation, because of what will happen, he says, therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. There is an element of effort and work and drive that needs to happen uh, in the Christian life. But it is motivated by the fact that he is not going to be a myth or a, a legend that will never be proven to be the real thing. That you and I are motivated to be um, enduring and, and practicing in our faith because there is a day that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is the Lord. And so Paul even says to work out our salvation in fear and trembling. And I don't claim to be an expert to know all that that means, but it certainly isn't something that we should diminish and say, well, he didn't really mean fear because trembling is a pretty strong word. And if I'm going to work out my, my salvation in a way that is productive and meaningful and endures to the end, it better be motivated by something that is the fuel that's going to fill my tank. And he's saying, be on the lookout because one day we're all going to acknowledge he was right. He was who he said he was. All of the things that we traded him in for, all the times that we didn't give our lives to him and de dedicate ourselves to his, his goodness, his glory, by his grace, all of those times we'll say, why didn't, I, why didn't I just stick with it? Because clearly he's victorious at the end. So let's be motivated by more than just practical um, uh, benefit that we get from our faith. Let's be motivated by the fact that we're all going to be in that choir singing his praises. Why don't we start practicing now? God bless you and have a great day.